my friends good morning welcome back to true crime junkies excited to be back today bringing you this episode um some of you may have read a little bit about this on the news i really didn't get too much media attention but it is important to share and bring to some attention to this case um it is called mysterious deaths um between december 2000 and february 2001 in Nocona General Hospital. This um, hospital had recorded an unusual large surge in patients' deaths and between the ages of 62 and 100, which had previously been in healthy conditions, um, rumors began to spread around the facilities that perhaps somebody had purposely been killing people, um, patients in this hospital. Uh, this eventually led the hospital administrator, Charles E. Norris, to contact a pharmacist about a discrepancy he had taken note of um, during this time period when the rumors were going around. Noticed that some vials of Mivacron had been going missing, which initially ascribed to inventory mismanagement at that, at that moment. And as it was not considered a lethal substance, didn't really put too much um, attention to it at that time. And after consulting with the pharmacist and tracing that all the death occurred during one particular shift, Norris, no, no, Norris he ordered that the cabinets with Mivacron be locked with keys and everything and access only by supervisors and that police should be notified immediately if any suspicion, suspicious activity occurred. Um, subsequently, a joint investigation by the local police, the Texas Rangers, and the FBI was launched to investigate the death of more than 20 patients who may have been poisoned with Mivacron. While exhumations from the cemeteries in North Texas and Oklahoma were underway, newspapers revealed that a civil lawsuit had been filed on behalf of one polio patient, a 61-year-old Donnelly Reed, who claimed that one of his nurses, Vicki Dawn Jackson, who had since been fired from the hospital, had injected a drug into his IV tube. While Reed sur survived the ordeal, thanks to another nurse who came to his aid, he would die two months later from pneumonia. Um, let's go back and talk about this nurse he reported, Vicki Dawn Jackson. She was born Vicki Dawn Carson on February 13 in 1966 in Montague County, Texas. Um, little is publicly known about Jackson's early life. Um, we do know that she was a licensed vocational nurse since 1989 who worked at several other hospitals and nursing homes around North Texas and eventually found employment at a, the Nakona General Hospital sometimes during late 2000. Uh, the hospital is known for treating predominant, predominantly elderly patients with slight ailments. Um, a week after that, another lawsuit was filed by the children of the 87-year-old Boyd Bruce Burnett, alleging that Jackson had injected him with un unprescribed drugs that later resulted in his death on December 24th of 2000. After being fired from the hospital, Jackson found herself a new job at a local grocery store where she was later arrested on July 16th of 2002 on charges of four capital murders. She was um, remanded to await trial on a $2 million bond while the authorities continued to exhume and examine bodies for any further potential victims. Uh, and then her trial was scheduled for October 2004 and a gag order was issued on the case, preventing lawyers from revealing the specifics aside from the facts that prosecutors would not seek the death penalty. In January 2004, Jackson was charged with an additional six murders, and her bond was raised from two million to six million. Yikes. And Jackson's first trial would eventually result in a mistrial. 
as the judge determined that comments made by the prosecutor Ralph Guerrero had some prejudice jurors towards the defendant. Um, as a result, the venue for the upcoming trial was moved to San Angelo and the new jury will be selected. Guerrero had told the jurors that investigators had located vials of Mivacron at Jackson's home and suggested that her her failing marriage and losing custody of her children might have been a contribution factor for her decisions to start killing patients. At her second trial, FBI Special Agent David Burns, he testified against Jackson, revealing that in the course of several interrogations with her, he determined that she had killed the patients in fits for anger for being too demanding and that she had attempted to injure several others, including a 14-year-old girl and a 14-year-old woman suffering from Crohn's disease. When pressed as to why she felt the need to kill them, she just simply replied that she did not know. In the end, Jackson pleaded no contest to 10 capital murders um, charges and accepted the life imprisonment term in exchange for avoiding a jury trial and having her daughter testify against her. Now, following her, convic her conviction, she released a statement via her attorney proclaiming her innocence and expressing statements via her attorney proclaiming her innocence and expressing her sympathy for the families of the victims, which was met with lukewarm reception. She and the defense team attended an, a hearing in 2015 seeking a new trial and a dismissal of the writ, but no results have been reported of that endeavor. As of August 2021, she does remain incarcerated at the Christina Melton Crane Unit in Gatesville with her early possible parole date being 2000 in 2042. Um, this is a very sad case because so many victims um, died because she made the decision, because she was unhappy and frustrated and made the decision, the decision to poison these patients. And she really, in my opinion, does not deserve parole. Um, I really do hope she stays in, in jail and these families do get the resolutions they need um, to put their family at rest and moving on from this and not have to relive their family's death and everything like this um so i hope you guys enjoy this case information and if you are interested in listening to the upcoming case that will be posted this upcoming week make sure to subscribe now and um set up your notifications on any of your favorite platforms like apple on spotify they will be available each week and you can also follow me on instagram go ahead and check it out true crime junkies and that is junkies with a z and you'll be able to get notifications of every upcoming cases and i will be definitely posting each week i hope you guys enjoy this and i look forward to speaking to you guys again bye